In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Today we celebrate St. Paisios the Athenite, one of my favorite saints. I mention him in the ending uh, blessing in just about any service, and I pray to him every day, and I think you should too. He's a modern-day saint. He died not long ago, and there's some books that are out that are his sayings, and even some things that he's written. They're well worth getting, especially a five-volume set. Very well worth your time to read them and to see how a saint thinks. And there's a lot of material about him, fortunately, a lot of biographical material and such. Uh, he was uh, obviously an unmarried man in the military, and he wanted to become a monk very early in his life, but he was frustrated in that way. God didn't allow it. I won't say he was personally frustrated, but his desire was not allowed. So he had to, he was drafted and went into the military and he was a spotter for artillery and he made it clear that he never wanted to carry a gun. But he was a spotter for artillery and artillery might have killed somebody. So he, to the end of his days, resolutely refused to become a priest. He must have been asked a hundred times and he absolutely refused in every way. And this is a person who didn't become a priest and yet he saw visions, he saw St. Ephemia. To give you something of his character, this might seem like a small thing to you, but I think it's a really big thing to you, to me. Uh, it's, it shows his throne in mind. It shows he has such, such a beautiful spirit. So he saw Saint Ephemia many times, the great martyr, and he saw her outside in his Kelly at a certain spot. And he developed, I believe it was stomach cancer, and he was really quite ill. He was so ill he could only do a, a couple thousand prostrations in an evening instead of four or five thousand. I'm serious. He still did thousands of prostrations and yet he was doubled over in pain. And because of his problems, sometimes he had to get to facilities quickly. So they wanted to get an outhouse that was near his Kelia. And somebody proposed that this is the perfect spot. It's right outside the door, etc. And he says, oh no, we can't do that. Why? Because Saint, Saint Ephemia appeared to me there on a piece of ground. <laughs> Saint Ephemia appeared to him, and so he didn't want to have an outhouse put out there. This is the kind of spirit he had. He was a man's man. If you see some of his writing, he lamented the weakness of our age and the weakness of uh, our bishops, the weakness of Christianity. Christianity is not for weak people. Now, if you're weak in sin, okay. But if you're weak in that you're just lazy in your heart, if you're just always giving yourself excuses, if you're full of uh, fear all the time and anxiety all the time about things, if you're worried about how people think about you, then you're not going to be much of a Christian. St. Paisios was none of those things. <laughs> he was a superb Christian. He never rested. Even when he traveled, he would keep up his rule in the evenings. So there was one time that he was traveling and he was given a room and he was doing his prostrations. But the, um, the prostrations, he could tell that the, you could hear them, right, because of the floor. So he didn't do them because he didn't want to be found out. So he would do his prostrations if no one knew about them. Truly an amazing, beautiful saint that we should learn about because there's so much material about him, we can learn about him easily. The two Gospels are about him today. Now, the first one is the one that is read for the particular Thursday after Pentecost. This is the fifth Thursday. So it's about his mother, Jesus' mother and brothers being outside, seeking to speak with him. And then one says to him, look, your mother and your brothers are outside. And he answered to the one, and he told him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? He stretched out his hands toward his disciples. And he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whosoever does the will of the, my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. St. Paisios was brother and sister and mother to our Lord Jesus Christ, intimately of his family, intimately joined to him because of his ascetical life, because of his phronimo, because of his love, and because of his intensity. The other Gospels basically the same thing, the same general meaning, and that's the one given for him and many other venerable saints. Saint Nikiforos, for instance, this is given for him. All things were delivered unto me by my Father, and no one doth fully know the Son except the Father, nor doth anyone fully know the Father except the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son is willing to reveal him. I want to make a comment about this in light of 
whatever news is happening. Recently, we have terrible news that's happening about an uh, absolute blasphemy, a noxious blasphemy of say, taking something that is evil and calling it good and blasting it all over the world because of our communication capabilities by an archbishop, no less. We see this every day, actually. Every day, the truth is just being eroded. And why is that? Is it because people don't know that there are certain sins that are, are definitely sins? Is it that people don't know that a righteous life is not living in fornication? Of course they don't know that. But that's not the core reason. The core reason is because they don't know Jesus Christ. The whole purpose of our life is to know Jesus Christ. If we know Jesus Christ, then he helps us, he reveals to us the Father. Since he is in the image of the Father, he will show us the Father. He's the only one who can do it. The whole point of our religion is to know Jesus Christ, to be intimately acquainted with him, to be intimately joined to him. So all of the things that people are doing, the crazy things, the jurisdictional disputes, and the schismatic stuff that's happening in Ukraine, now it's, it's been happening in our country now, and uh, the winking at severe sexual sin of all kind, all, so many other things. These things are a sign of the core problem. The core problem is, for too many people, their religion is not Jesus Christ. Their religion is themselves. Their religion is the world. Now, St. Paisios, his religion, if you can use such a word, religion, if you look it up in the dictionary, it really doesn't really apply to what an Orthodox Christian is. We have a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our father and our mother and our brother, according to Jesus Christ. So, well, we are his <laughs> brothers and mother. But according, people live according to their own whims, their own desires. And St. Paisios, he beat that out of himself by prostrations nightly, by a very substantial prayer rule, by giving up his will to others. And we must do the same. This is the purpose of our, of our life. And the whole reason for all of these terrible heresies, all of these schisms, and there's going to be more, all of this call to union with, with the schismatic Latins and, that's, and, and the heretical Latins, that's going to happen. It's going to happen very shortly in our lifetime. I think it, the signs are pretty clear. I'm not a prophet at all, but I think the signs are getting clearer and clearer. And they care less and less about what anyone else thinks because nobody has the guts to call out these heretical bishops that are not only preaching heresy, but they're preaching uh, immorality, which is going to kill the sheep. Now the shepherd, if he has a gun, it's for wolves, not for the sheep. But we have shepherds that are using their weapons upon the sheep. St. Paisius wouldn't have had any of this. I think he would have spoken out about what recently happened, where Archbishop Lepidorus blasphemously winked at, not just winked at, he endorsed open homosexuality and baptized the, not just the adopted children, these were the surrogate children of a homosexual couple. Surrogate children. If you don't understand about surrogacy, they probably took the sperm from one of them, impregnated various eggs, and then uh, saw which would take. And usually there's at least, usually nine or more, and then they pick the one they want. Oh, this one based upon certain genetic characteristics or that it, it's viable or something. What with the other ones? Well, with the other ones, often they're just flushed down the toilet or are frozen for who knows how long until eventually they're frozen. Uh, I heard one person say that, that there is this idea that there's sometimes that one of those fertilized eggs that wasn't used is put into jewelry. This is ghoulish and terrible. And so these surrogate children, may God save these children, may they find paradise of this homosexual couple, were baptized and then the big spread was made all over the world about how beautiful this is with non-Orthodox God children and our godparents and everything else. This is a tragedy and a tra travesty. St. Paisius would not have been quiet about this. We don't have many, too, too many people that are talking about this yet. There's one bishop so far that has spoken out very powerfully about this and called this uh, a terrible heresy. And also, of course, it's the endorsement of sexual things that are completely forbidden by the church because they're toxic to the human soul. St. Paisius would have spoken out. But the reason why all these things are happening is because they don't understand that all things are delivered to our Lord by the Father, and no one does know the, know the Son except through the Father, and no one can know the Father except the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son is willing to reveal him. 
He will not reveal himself to those who are immersed in sin. Now we are sinners. But let us let it never be that we're immersed in sin. Let it never be that we give excuses for our sins. Let it be that we struggle against our sin. But those who do not struggle against those, their sins, those who make their sins photo opportunities, God is not revealing himself to them. And that's a terrible tragedy, no matter how beautiful the pictures are. So that the purpose of your life is to know the Son. And you have to do ascetical life to know the Son. It's not possible without ascetical life. It's not possible without your prostrations, without saying the Psalter, without saying your prayer rule. Uh, any combination thereof, I think all three. But it's not possible without asceticism. And we have in our church, for the most part, not the church, not our, not, but the people within the church, her heretical, heresiarchs within the church, that are preaching a gospel without Jesus Christ. A gospel of the world. A gospel of political correctness. A gospel of immorality and perversity. This is a tragedy. And we can't succumb to it. Now, how are you going to stay away from it? You can stay away from it by saying, oh, no, I don't do those things. I don't, I don't go with those things. I'm against this and I'm against that and I'm against this and that. Oh no, I would never do this. If that's the way that you fight these things, then you're going to lose a bit. The way you fight these things is the way St. Paisius did, by a rigid prayer rule and by loving others and by absolutely just giving himself no quarter and by having a heart that overflowed with love for God. I'll give you one more story about him because it's just an amazing story to me. I wish I knew the exact... Uh, story. I've read it, of course. Uh, it might be in that book about the somebody, the guru and St. Per, Paricio. So it might be also uh, in, in the big green book, that wonderful biography of him by Father Isaac. That's a fantastic book to read. That book has changed my life. It's in the top five of books that have changed my life. So St. Paisios became aware because he had a, a heart that was open to God. So God told him things. He was aware that there was a man who was really struggling in some way that was really significant for his soul. He didn't know anything else about this. He didn't know who the man was or when the man would come to him. He didn't know anything. It just so happened that this man, this stranger to St. Paisius, whom he had never met, was a person who was going to kill himself. He had a motorcycle and he rode his motorcycle up a mountain and he thought, I'm just going to ride it off this mountain. I'm going to be done with my life which hasn't been so good so far. But then he was actually relatively near to St. Paisios. He was a Greek. I think he was on in Thessalonica, Thessalonica, near Mount Athos. So he decided, I'll go see the elder first. Everybody talks about this elder. I can go see him, and then I can go kill him, kill myself. So St. Paisios knew about the man, nothing of all these details. And he did thousands of prostrations for one human being, one human being, begging the Lord to save this man. And then when the man arrived, he knew this was the one. Well, of course, the man repented. St. Paisios had the right words for him because he had the right heart for him. And he didn't kill himself. I don't remember the rest of the story. I don't remember what happened to him. But that shows the, the kind of heart that a Christian must have. That's the kind of heart that God reveals himself. The cold hearts... God does not reveal himself to those hearts. They might know some prayers. They might have the Psalter memorized. But God doesn't reveal himself to those people. He only reveals himself to those who have a heart like his. Now, if you are troubled by your sins, all right, you should be troubled by your sins. But you should be more troubled if your heart is indifferent. That's the greatest sin. Your heart has to love. You reach out to your neighbor. The greatest way of fulfilling the great commandment is the second one to love your neighbor as yourself. And St. Paisius is an incredible example of that. He would counsel people for hours upon hours upon hours, sometimes even in a language. I know in one case, I think a person who spoke French, and he didn't speak any French. And the Frenchman didn't speak any, any Greek. And they went out to the stumps that he had in the woods, and they spoke for a couple hours and understood each other. So St. Paisius, there's all kinds of stories like that. But the core of all these stories is that he had a heart that yearned for God. He had a heart that obeyed this directive, which is the same, basically the same idea as the first gospel. He says, come unto me, all ye who are labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you shall find rest to your souls. For my yoke is good and my burden is light. That's what we need to do. Now a yoke is for work, and he did a lot of work, our St. Paisius.
He did an enormous amount. He wore himself out doing work. So the work was hard, but the yoke was easy and the burden was light because the burden of sin is greater. But the terrible thing about the burden of sin is that sometimes, for most people, the burden of sin is not recognized as such. They recognize it as something else. Difficulties in life, the way people treat you, your life circumstances, blah, blah, blah. And instead, people should recognize that the reason why they're unhappy, the reason why things are unsettled in their lives, the reason why things are going so poorly, and I'm not talking about whether they have a good job or anything like that, poorly in their soul, is because of sin. That's why things are off for them. And our, our Saint Paisios, he took these words of our Lord literally. He took the yoke of our Lord Jesus Christ upon himself. And he knew that the burden was easy, and that it was a good yoke. But he worked and he labored. So this is what we should also do. And let's take another page from Saint Paisios and let's be courageous. We need his courage. There's not enough people that have courage in this world anymore. Personal courage to encounter themselves and courage to encounter the deluge of false information, of demonic information that is in the world and even unfortunately has infiltrated into the church, even into hierarchs. We have to have courage to confront that. Now maybe we're not warriors that can write a letter that is read by a million people. But we can live courageously, live piously, give no quarter to our sins, struggle in asceticism as St. Paisius did. And we won't see St. Ephemia. We probably won't be aware of some young man that's going to kill himself and we'll pray for him a thousand prostrations a night for a week. We probably won't have those kinds of gifts. Probably if someone speaks in French to us, we'll understand two or three words. But if we live even a little bit as St. Paisius did, a man who had incre incredible gifts. We don't have so many. But if we live even a little bit as he did, then indeed we'll be saved because we'll be, as our Lord said, we'll be like his mother and his brother. We'll have his yoke upon us and it will be good and the burden will be easy and light. God bless you and help you in all things.